I want to welcome everyone to the weekly virtual drush and begin by thanking the sponsor of this week's drusha, Mrs. Sandy Hoffman, for dedicating the drush in memory of her husband, Ruvain Ben Emanuel, and her mother, Braina Mina Bas Baruch. We hope that in the merit of our Tama Torah, the Neshamas will have an Aliyah and the family Zayn Nechama. We have the incredible privilege this week to read Parsha Sre'eh. And in Parsha Sre'eh, like so much of Chumash Devarim, Moshe Rabbeinu tries to just give these last pieces of wisdom, last pieces of inspiration and guidance for his fledgling people, a beloved nation whom he has shepherded for the last 40 years, but yet he knows he will not be able to shepherd them into this next chapter, their entry into the land of Israel, the conqueror of the land of Israel, and ultimately setting themselves up as a free autonomous people, living under the direction of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the direction of Torah. And Moshe Rabbeinu does everything in his power to warn them of the pitfalls, to warn them of the challenges and to really give them chizik, to give them incredible strength and give them incredible power to meet the challenges ahead. But Moshe Rabbeinu also uses Chumash Devarin as a review of everything that has occurred over the last 40 years, a historical review, going through the events, last words, because remember, by the time we get to Chumash Devarim, there's a whole new generation, a generation who never experienced Egypt, a generation who was born into the desert, a generation who heard the stories of their parents and grandparents, but they themselves never experienced it. Moshe Rabbeinu understood that to give this nation who would conquer the land of Israel the proper chizuk and historical perspective, you have to teach them about who they are, who they came from, where they came from, about the peaks and valleys of their history. And so, so much of Chumash Devarim is a historical review, but it's also a halachic review, a Torah review, where Moshe Rabbeinu goes out of his way to review many of the details of the Torah, again, in order to solidify and concretize the people's operational knowledge of Torah, so that when we would enter into the land of Israel, we'd be properly ready to set up a homeland based on the tenets of Torah, based on the tenets of Avodas Hashem, based on the tenets of mitzvahs and observance. So in one of these psukim, Moshe Rabbeinu says as follows, this is in Perik Yedalet, Pasuk Yedalet, chapter 14, verse 11, where Moshe Rabbeinu in this section is reviewing the laws of kashros, reviewing the laws of, of what we're allowed to eat, what we're not allowed to eat. And so he says, that any kosher bird or any pure bird, you are permitted to eat. You're permitted to eat. Now, there's a general rule in the Torah that whereas we could definitely repeat things, and Moshe Rabbeinu repeats many things in Chumash Devarim, as we said, but there's a concept that whenever you have a mitzvah or a precept that is repeated, there's always something new that is introduced. So whereas it might be the same law that is restated, but sometimes the formulation is a little bit different, sometimes the wording is a little bit different, the context is a little bit different. So even though it looks like the Torah is just reviewing a halacha, the Torah is always introducing some new piece of information as well. So the Mepharshim, the commentaries try to understand. So we've already learned before about kosher birds. We know that generally, again, the rule is, Birds of prey are not kosher. Birds that are not birds of prey are kosher. Now, of course, there are some ex there are some more specifics, but that's the general idea. So, in the Torah, Hakidosha tells us, "You may eat any pure or quote unquote kosher bird." So, what is it? I understand. I already learned that. We, we learned that back in in, in Chumash Vayikra. We learned that back in Parsha Shmini, where the Torah goes into great detail regarding the laws of kashros, the dietary laws. So what exactly is being added over here? What is it exactly that the Torah, what's the nuance, what's the additional dimension of understanding? And Rashi HaKadosh says something absolutely amazing. Rashi writes, You may eat any kosher bird. What does it come to include? It comes to include the bird that is sent away as part of the tzara'as process part of the tsaras purification process. What is this referring to? So if we go back to Parshas Mitzora in Chumash Vayikra, so we remember the details. The Torah tells us that a person is afflicted by tsaras. We often translate tsaras as leprosy, but really that's not, leprosy is a, is a physical ailment. Tsaras was a physical manifestation of a spiritual malady. A person was spiritually ill. Again, Saras is most closely associated with Lashon Hara. Lashon Hara. So what would happen? A person would be afflicted with Saras. They get lesions on their skin. Okay, without going into all details of Saras. And there's, a, there's an isolation period. There is a reintegration period. And then as part of the purification process for Saras, a person 
must bring a series of sacrifices, a number of different karbanos. And among those karbanos are two birds, the Torah says. One of the birds is slaughtered, and one of the birds is sent away. Sent away. So Rashi says over here that when the Torah in, in this week's parasha, parasha Re'e, reviews the laws of Kashros and restates a principle that we already learned before, namely, called Sipa Tahora Tachelu, you may eat any kosher bird. We already learned that before. So what is it coming to include? It's coming to include that if you caught the bird that the Mitzora sent away, you're permitted to eat that bird as well. You're permitted to eat that bird. Okay, interesting halacha. I guess Rashi's saying you might have thought that since that bird was used as part of a sacrificial service, then perhaps when it's sent away, although it's sent away, it's not, it's not actually sacrificed, maybe if you were to catch it again, let's say you tagged it before you sent it away, you know, oh, that's the Mitzora bird. I might have thought you can't eat it. Therefore, the Torah tells us, no, kol, kol, kol is an inclusive statement. Kol tzipar tahora tochilu, you can eat any kosher bird, even the bird that was sent away by the mitzora, by the person afflicted with saras, as part of his purification process. So what's the pshat? What's, what's, the, what's, the, what's the deeper meaning? I mean, it's, it's, don't get me wrong, it's interesting, certainly fascinating, but what's the deeper meaning? What's the panemius? What's the deeper message that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is trying to convey to us? What's the lesson? What's the life lesson? How do we learn? How do we grow from this? So Rashi in Chumash Baker already explains, why is it that birds are part of the purification process for Tsaras? Why birds? Why birds? Birds are virtually never offered as part of sacrificial service, really only in cases of poverty. When a person can't bring an animal, sometimes you can, so under certain carbonic sacrificial circumstances, you could go ahead and offer up a bird instead. But birds are not generally brought. Animals, livestock are brought. So why birds? So Rashi says over here in Chumash Vayikra, as you mentioned before, primarily why does a person get saras? Because of Lashon Hara. Because he spoke ill of someone else. He slandered someone else. He spoke Lashon Hara. He says, Shumaisa pitpute dvarim. What's, what's Lashon Hara? Lashon Hara is when a person chirps too much. Talk too much. Right? You know, again, Chazal speak of this so many times, the power of silence. Because chances are when you're silent, there's a much, there's a much smaller statistical probability of getting yourself in trouble if you remain silent. What's Lashon Hara? Chirping. Chirping, incessant, chirping, incessant, talking, incessant, slandering. So, just like, so therefore, when the Mitzorah undergoes his purification process, he brings birds almost to reinforce the nature of his sin. Just like the birds are constantly chirping, you, so and so, you, Plony, right? You, the Mitzorah, you chirped a little too much, you chirped a bit too incessantly. You chirped negatively. So Rashi understands that birds play a role in the purification process of the Mitzorah because it represents what the Mitzorah did wrong. The birds chirping constantly fill, fill the air. They're, they're, and the birds chirping is melodic, it's beautiful. But the Mitzorah also chirped just a bit too much and a bit too negatively. But the Zohar is, so the Zohar accepts this, but the Zohar is bothered by this, by this imagery. So why two birds? Why two birds? And why is one slaughtered and one released? I am nervous. Rashi's imagery is birds should be part of the sacrificial service, of the purification service of the Mitzora, because they're representative of, they, they represent ultimately what the Mitzora did wrong, right? Meaning they, there's, there's an incredible metaphor, there's an incredible symbolism involved here. The Mitzora chirped too much, like birds who chirp, like birds who chirp. But why two birds? And here the Zohar says something dramatically amazing. The Zohar writes, Begain mila bisha, kach anshe. Begain mila tava de ka'asil yade, biachale madala vadamalu. Says the Zohar something amazing. One bird represents the negative words that were spoken. And one bird represents the positive words which could have been spoken, but were not. The Zohar tells us that when a person speaks Lashon Hara, there's like there's a double negative dynamic. The double negative dynamic is that on one hand, I'm speaking negatively about someone else. But in that very moment, when I could have been speaking, when I was speaking negatively, I could have been speaking positively. In the same moment when I was using my words to deconstruct and to demolish and to slander and to hurt someone, I could have at the same time been using my words to build up, to build up, to help, to encourage, 
to infuse positivity into someone. So there's a double sin. There's the active use of words in a negative way, and there's a loss of an opportunity to use words in a positive way. And it says there's something amazing. The bird that is slaughtered, that represents the negative words. It represents negative speech. Because with negative words, you could slaughter someone. With negative words, you could demolish and destroy someone. With negative words, you could destroy an entire life, an entire world. So the net slaughtered bird represents the negative words. What about the bird that we let free? The bird that we let free represents the lost opportunity. In that same time when you were speaking so negatively about that person, I could have been building them up with my words. I could have been encouraging them with my words. I could have been filling them with hope, optimism, chizik. But I didn't. I lost an opportunity. Because I used my speech in a negative way, I lost the opportunity to simultaneously use it in a positive way. And so that bird, that, li that living bird, which represents positive speech, I have to let it go. It flies away because it represents missed opportunities. So incredibly, this was the purification process of the Mitzorah. The Mitzorah had to confront not only the wrongness of his deeds, not only the error of his ways, not only the fact that he engaged in bad, terrible behavior, but that he missed an opportunity to do something great as well. He missed an opportunity to do something beautiful. He missed an opportunity to do something holy. And that opportunity is forever gone that opportunity flies away. Because so many times in life, we have opportunities within our hands, within our, within our grasp, within our fingertips, and we just let it go. We just let it fly away. But comes Parshas Re'e and something amazing happens. The Torah tells us, called Sipra Tahora Tochelu, you could eat any kosher bird. You could eat any kosher bird. And now she says, no, what is it coming to include? It comes to include that in the event that you somehow recaptured that bird that was sent away, it's kosher, you could eat it. And what's the deeper message? So perhaps what the Torah is teaching us is that sometimes in life, you can regain lost opportunities. Sometimes in life, the things that got away, you can grab them back. Sometimes it's true when you let go of the bird of opportunity, lost opportunity is lost opportunity and it's gone forever. It flies away and you can ne never to be seen again. But sometimes, sometimes, there are those moments in life where you let the beautiful bird of opportunity, you had to set it free, you let it go, you missed it, you missed it. But sometimes you're able to recapture it. But if you recapture it, consume it. If you can capture it, eat it. If you capture it, Take advantage of it. Don't fail again. Don't lose out on the opportunity again. Sometimes in life, opportunity passes you by and you cannot regain it. But sometimes in life, opportunities which slip through our fingers come back again, make another appearance. And when they do, called Tzipar Tahora Tochelu. When that bird of opportunity shows up again, it got away the first time. You had to let it go the first time. You missed out on the first time. But if you find it again, eat it. <laughs> if you find it again, consume it. If you find it again, take advantage of it. And what a powerful lesson. I think really a number of powerful lessons. Number one, when we make choices in life, understand whenever you choose A, you sacrifice B. That's, that's a reality. We don't like to think about that because we like to have A and B. We like to have our cake and eat it too. But the truth is, when you, make, when you choose one thing, by definition, you're sacrificing something else. Make sure in life you make the right choices. Because no one could have everything. So if you choose Lashon Hara, you're losing out on the power of positive speech. If I choose to engage in negative behaviors and negative lifestyles, I'm losing out. Not only am I committing an Avera, but I'm losing out on the ability to do something great. So whatever you choose in life, make sure you're making the right decisions. Because every choice has an expense. Every choice has a consequence. Every time you choose one thing, by definition, you have to give up something else. Lesson two is the power that when we commit that virus, which inevitably we all do, we all make mistakes. But the true sadness of an avera, I think, lies not in the commission of a negative act. Because again, we all sin. We all make mistakes. 
But the true sadness, the true tragedy of an Aveira is that in that moment, with that time and with those resources, that I was doing something negative, I could have been doing something beautifully positive. And because I chose instead to use my time and to use my resources doing something negative, that positive opportunity has fluttered away. It's gone. It's gone. Very often never to be seen again. Lesson number three is that there are times in life when you do get a second chance. And when you get a second chance, grab it. If opportunity has passed you by, and then by some miracle, by some miracle, that bird of the Mitzorah perches itself on your shoulder, that bird of the Mitzorah presents itself in front of you, grab it. Grab it. Take it. Don't let it go again. Called Sipar Tahora Tochelu. If opportunity presents itself a second time, don't let it go. And I think that these messages are always important, but especially on this Shabbos. Because this Shabbos isn't only Shabbos, which is beautiful every week. And there's only Shabbos Parashat which is incredible. But it's also Shabbos Mevarchim Chodesh Elul. This Shabbos, we will announce the month, announce the arrival of the month of Elul, this coming week in Merit Hashem. Elul is a dynamic month, because Elul is a month which allows us to close out the year properly and begin to prepare for the coming year in a proper way. And Chodesh Elul, this holy month, is an opportunity for us to ask ourselves, what opportunities have we let slip through our fingers? Which birds of opportunity have we allowed to flutter and fly away? Where have we missed out in life? And dear friends, sometimes when you identify the opportunities that have been missed, you know, some of them cannot be regained, but some of them can. Some of them can. Sometimes we pass an opportunity, and miraculously enough, those opportunities are still there. Chodesh Elul gives us the chance to say, even if I missed the window of opportunity the first time, let me see if those opportunities are still there. Let me see if those things I want to accomplish, those things I wanted to do, that person I wanted to become, let me see if those doves of opportunity, those birds of opportunity are still here. That's the power of Chodesh Elul. Over the course of the year, so many times, I let the birds of opportunity fly away. Chodesh Elul is, I need to close out the year right. I need to tie up the loose ends. I need to finish the things that I promised myself last Rosh Hashanah I was going to do. I, but I missed so many opportunities. I let so many, I slaughtered so many birds, so many mistakes. I let so many birds go. It's okay. It's part of the human dynamic. But this month we have the opportunity to ask ourselves, what opportunities have we let fly by? What opportunities have we missed out on? What initiatives and dreams in life still remain unmaterialized? I've got a month to make it happen. I've got a month to close out this year in the right way. This is the power of Chodesh Elul. So on this Shabbos and the days leading up to this month, let's think about the things we want to accomplish. Let's think about the loose ends we want to tie up. Let's think about the things that we want to do, the people we want to be. Let's think about the birds of opportunity that we have let slip through our fingers over the course of this year. And let's use this month to end this year, Tav Shin Pei 5780, in the way we had in mind last Rosh Hashanah. Because almost a year ago this time, we had a vision for the year. And I would think that for many of us, the vision hasn't fully materialized. Sometimes because of life circumstances, sometimes just because of me. But it's not too late. Even if you let some birds go by, try to recapture them. And when you recapture those opportunities, called Sipar Tahora Tochelo. Because if a Kaddish Baruch Hu gives you the opportunity to recapture an opportunity, if you have an opportunity to recapture an opportunity, don't let it go again. May we be Zoha Mir Tzashem to try to identify and recapture the birds that got away. And may we be Zochem Yeretz Hashem to consume them, to enjoy them, to actualize them. And Yeretz Hashem utilize this holy month of Elul to close out the year with happiness and with holiness. Wishing everyone a good and Erev Shabbos and a beautiful Shabbos Kodesh.